How you doing? Is your first Comic Con? Yes. Well, welcome to the Comic Con. Thank you. I'm having a ball, man. Having a ball. I would uh, say without hesitation, no, simply because he is a man who has uh, picked up the shield to serve and protect, and he feels like he can accomplish all of that on his own terms. He believes in the law that much, you know. That's a great question, man. And that scene got cut, uh, got trimmed a little bit because there was even more of a discussion in there about vigilantism and there is the law. We do things this way. But I love playing that art. I don't necessarily... Uh, I wish I had superpowers. I had Damon sometimes, you know. But Henderson is, you know, he's devoted. Do you think uh, the relationship of you and, and Jefferson or Black Lightning will, will eventually become as smoothly as Jim Gordon and Batman? Or will we trust each other? Maybe, maybe. I think that's where they might... Uh, might be headed, but I, I don't think Henderson is, you know, Gordon. No. I think he's a little feistier than Gordon, and I think that the minute he finds out that his friend has betrayed him in a way for the last 30 years, there's no telling what, what might happen there. But, you know, that's me. I don't know. They might write something and be like, you're a Commissioner Gordon. He'd be like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's what I was going to ask is how is he going to react when he finds out that his friend is making well, people his In my mind, the only way he can act is pretty pissed off. I mean, them on this. That's his, that, the other thing about Jefferson is that's really his only uh, ally. That's really his only person between job and community. He's an enemy of the community because he's a police officer at this time. He's an enemy of Jefferson's family pretty much because he's a police officer. So Jefferson is his boy and to lose that, you know, I think that would be a uh, so, I look forward to that. I've been looking forward to that since day one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One of the most empowering seasons the whole season was when, when uh, Anderson, when he basically you know, confronted the, those rogue cops and kind of began yeah, to, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, I, yeah. No, I stood up. And I'm like, oh, this is lit. Oh, wow. Yeah. wow. So I wonder, is, are we going to see more of them and having to not only fight you know, the, the criminals of uh, right. Greenland, but also the rogue cops within the police station? Oh, yeah. I, I have no doubt they'll explore that more. It's Especially because they promoted him. They promoted him. He's deputy chief in this and now, so we really have to, like, clean up some stuff. So. And he, he alludes to the fact that there are lots of bad seeds in the community during the first season. So that, he's got to get to work, roll up his sleeves, and, and do what he says he's going to do. You know? Yeah. These are great questions. These are good questions, man. These are the good questions. <laughs> yeah, do you hope that, that we'll actually explore, like, maybe do a brief flashback of how you guys met and just I how hope that, so. that really That's progressed a good idea. over the yeah. years? Yeah, because yeah. we, cause we, I think we, you know, they have to get a lot of information in, but we kind of started out that way where we saw more screen time between the two of them. But, uh, yeah, I think they'll get back to, you know, that time they went fishing and, and some converse or something, you know what I mean? Yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff, yeah, yeah. Because you need that, you need that bond. Yeah, especially since you're a cop and your wife has to worry about you, and exactly. now, you know, Jefferson, even though he's Black Lightning, right. he can kind of relate to that. So it's right. not like they don't have that dynamic, and maybe great would you want great to point. eventually explore that once he processes and finds out that is, that he lost that connection. Yeah, because that's part of the healing of that, too. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. Definitely. He would definitely want that. Y'all are great, man. Yeah. In the comic, Henderson is you know, a Superman character. So I wonder, like, might we see more version of Henderson's like passage to maybe other metahumans, DC characters? I mean, like, has he? It's, it's sure. not like the first Superman that met. Yes, in our world, this Henderson, you mean? Yeah. yeah. This Henderson is the first. Like, he he's specifically in the Freeland world for now. You know, he doesn't. He hasn't uh, existed outside that world. Not yet. Yeah. Do you want to see him? Maybe like, oh, I used to know this guy or this girl. Yeah, I used to know Superman. I don't know. That's a, I, Damon the fan wants to see that, but I don't know if he would. You know? 
That's a good question. Boy, these are good, man. <laughs> these are seriously the best questions I've been asked. But thank you all so much. It means a lot. Seriously. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> she said it's an interesting city. Like, being a native of Detroit, Michigan, there are lots of things about Atlanta that remind me of Detroit, so sometimes it feels like home. But I haven't lived in either place. I've been in New York and Los Angeles for the last 25 years or whatever. So it's, it's a bit of a culture shock sometimes. Right now it's 92 degrees. So coming to San Diego, an hour and a half from my house, or an hour 45 minutes, two hours from LA, feels like heaven, man. And I'm, I love Southern California. Atlanta, I won't, you know, I love Atlanta too. I mean, because there, there's so much there, there's so much history there. And, and for a show like this, a sense of community and politics, and, you know, one minute you march in the to tear down the Confederate monument around the corner, and then next week you're at the Atlanta Dream game, and it's, it's, it's yeah, it's a good place. It could be worse. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.